You're probably wondering how I got here. Well, I didn't fall or crash off of this weird looking bike sort of thing. I'm actually doing just fine. It all started when I was cruising past a pawn shop here in Salt Lake City. As is normal, I size up bikes that are outside at a quick glance. Tied up to the rest of them was the half bike. I knew right then and there that I had to have it. It's so weird and so strange. It's got to be so much fun. I was right, and about 100, maybe 120 bucks later, I got to walk away with this beautiful specimen of a wacky bike. A lot of people notice that this bike has no seat and that the front wheel is the drive wheel with the gearing running through it. Also, it's technically a trike, but I mean, in all reality, it doesn't feel like one at all. Of course, it looks uncomfortable and very difficult to ride, which is certainly not a half truth. What a lot of people actually don't notice is that the handlebars don't really do a whole lot. They don't rotate to change direction, but instead they do offer some steering with a straight connection down to the frame, making sort of a twisting mechanism throughout the solid wood stem and the aluminum lower frame. This means that the steering is 100% leaning in balance, and it is kind of magnified by the handlebars, as you can kind of grab it and then twist the frame of the bike to go. Now, if you like skiing, this might be a familiar feeling for you. For me, it was totally new and required a lot of extra learning. Now, the half bike is a huge challenge to ride in various ways. Honestly, that's what I love about it. Stopping the bike with a slide, that's a skill that I have not yet attained. The half bike does have a set of brakes on the back wheel, which I thought would be fine, but the at least on the model that I got from the pawn shop, they are functionally useless. Squeezing the single handle on the handlebar, it engages a set of rim brakes that are only on the inside track of the rear wheel. Now, since there isn't much weight on these and the front wheel of a bicycle usually takes the brunt of stopping force, I really don't know what these are supposed to do other than offer a false sense of security for a new rider. I'm really left to wonder how to solve that puzzle because I'm guessing if the front wheel did have a brake, it could just fling the rider over the handlebars. I don't know, I didn't design this thing. A part of me wants to remove one foot and then use the sole of my shoe to use as a brake, you know, kind of like the way they do on fixies, but I think that would really complicate my balance because that's actually one of the hardest things about this bike because the balance is a lot more forward than it really felt like it should have been. The closest that I've had to doing this was riding a unicycle with training wheels. With both the unicycle and the half bike, I had to try several times to find the right spot to maintain momentum, and after that I had to practice some more so that I didn't slalom left and right across the trail. With about 20 minutes on the half bike, I could reliably get around other people with confidence. Now that felt really good on a unicycle and it took a lot longer that way, but with the half bike it certainly was not the finish line. The half bike is very tiring to ride. It is utterly unique in how it interacts with the rider. You don't have a seat to rest on and the handlebars have a very sensitive connection with steering, so I don't really feel comfortable posting my body weight onto the handlebars at all. Instead, this means that the rider's weight is entirely on the balls of your feet. Now that same touch point, which is interacting with the pedals, it's also taking the burden of propulsion and steering. Now I'm sure Michael Jackson would be just fine at this, but for the rest of us, that's a lot to ask. So I'm talking about all this as if it's a bad thing, as if the half bike is actually a serious contender for a regular bike. The reality is that I'm never going to get rid of the half bike. I love being challenged and I love a new way of thinking about how to move. The half bike is a great vehicle for getting around in this pavement paradise in a new and challenging way. And as a result, it has a firm place in the wacky bike stable. And if it wasn't such a great workout, I would be tempted to say that it was pointless. Some people have said that the half bike offers a total body workout, and I mostly agree. The half bike is completely exhausting to ride, and after mastering difficult balance, then at that point the rider is rewarded with a very difficult apparatus that uses underutilized muscle groups that have not been challenged on a regular bike. And so that's how I got here. I rode the half bike for about four miles and I am totally pooped. I didn't think that my arms got too much of a workout, but I really don't care. Because right now I gotta call my wife and have her pick me up. And thankfully, the bike folds up and transports a lot easier than the rowing machine bike. Yeah, if you didn't know, that's totally a thing. 
The row bike is another wacky bike that I'm going to cover on the channel in the near future, and with that one I have high hopes for an arm workout. If you'd like, you can support the channel directly on Patreon, or you can subscribe so you don't miss out on the row bike or other upcoming wacky bike rides. Thanks for watching Blue Monkey Bicycles, and I will see you on the later. <laughs>